So it's, it's our pleasure to welcome Dr. Stephen Lin, uh, author of The Dental Diet, a uh, speaker and author who has been able to merge anthropologic, physiologic, and nutritional science with oral health. And we're so fortunate to, to have you here in our office to uh, l learn a little bit more about how nutrition can affect all aspects of our life. Oh, it's my pleasure, Dr. Zagin. Thank you very much for having me. And, and it's been great coming to see your approach because this is such an exciting conversation. Yeah, and we're also here with Sandoval Pinkerton, who is our uh, in-house uh, myofunctional therapist and really um, uh, the, the key component of the, the functional structural approach to uh, sleep medicine. So, Dr. Lee, the first time when I noticed the book was like last summer, and I was fascinated and very happy to see that someone is addressing nutrition and dental health. When did you start looking into how the food is affecting uh, development and child development? And yeah, it's a great question because I think we've all kind of come on our journeys to where we are today, and it really isn't, you know, a very um, you know, it's not a very linear path and so I was actually, I'm a dentist by trade um, and I was working uh, in my practice and as a, as a practitioner you find that uh, things get a bit repetitive and so you know, we identify disease, we fix them but I began to question, you know, did I really understand what was going on and so tooth decay, you know, gum disease, they, they start to get very vague in terms of what the actual causes are and then when you actually dig into uh, textbooks and what we're taught in university, uh, there really isn't a lot of understanding of why diseases happen. So it began to bother me and I, I began to question, you know, if I could do this for the rest of my life. And I actually took some time off and went through Europe. I went backpacking through Europe and I was in a, a, a youth hostel in Turkey and I actually stumbled across a shared reading um, shelf where people would leave their books and kind of go on their way. And, there was a book there called Nutrition and Physical Degeneration by Weston A. Price. I had never heard of it. In seven years of, wow. of uh, you know, professional training, no one ever told me about Weston A. Price. And so I picked it up. I was like, what is this? It said DDS on, on the spine. And I looked at it and I was like, I, w I was completely unaware of what this book was about. You know, it's got black and white photographs. It's about a, a, a dentist's journey in the 30s for, you know, around 14 cultures around the world. And I, and I actually discounted it. I thought... You know, this is obviously outdated and, you know, my education has not, uh, you know, kind of covered this. So it's got to be, you know, invalid or disproven. Put it in my backpack, went away. Years later, I kind of went back to it and I, I, I looked at it again. And it was just bothering. It must have been calling me or something. But it, I realized that I looked at it and I was like, I don't understand this. And Price's work looks through anthropological studies. He went to cultures where the modern diet is intercepting the... Um, uh, traditional diets where people have lived on traditional foods for thousands of years and so what he was doing he was earmarking you know what the entire effect of food is and why we see dental disease today. because he found that dental disease didn't exist until we eat the modern diet in every single place around the world and this was all he did was take photographs this was what so amazing and I didn't understand uh, that he would take photographs of these people that these lovely round uh, faces with jaws and, and square kind of uh, uh, angles of the, of the face and they didn't have any disease. They didn't have any tooth decay. Their wisdom teeth were erupted with space behind them. And so, and he showed this was there anthropologically as well. And so all of a sudden realized that what I was seeing in my surgery was not normal at all. And then so there was a huge underpinning journey of what he was saying was causing it and you know why we today we have basically destroyed uh, our teeth and our and how we grow as well. Fascinating. Well, thank you for taking that journey <laughs> and finding the book in Turkey. Right. Another concept, and uh, that's actually what we are talking and uh, with our patients. It is uh, talking about diet and how soon the child should eat and what kind of food. And I think it's another way of our contemporary society bringing all this uh, processed food and kind of changing the development of the child face and the jaw and actually eating habits. So what's your perspective on that? Absolutely. And this is one of the most important things I think we need to uh, have a conversation about in both the healthcare but also in broader society as well is that crooked teeth and malocclusion and jaw development is a fluid uh, system so that we are constantly inputting whether it's chewing 
uh, messages, whether it's nutrients, we are constantly uh, you know, telling our body whether to grow or whether to adapt to what we're, what we're giving it. And so chewing it, and we know breastfeeding, for instance, is the model to grow a child's jaw. You know, the, the child's tongue will, will, will push to the roof of the mouth and it will receive the nutrients. It's, it's um, you know, designed to kind of get over those first months. But then, as you say, we, we like to kind of hopefully get them away from the pureed food because we've taken away the chewing aspect. But there's also a, a big nutrient conversation to have as well in that the, the nutrients that grow jaws and bones are just like any other... Um, exactly. Yeah, any other the skeletal system. The skeletal system right. is a hungry, hungry system. It's, it's the baseline of our physiology, how we, our, our body manages calcium and minerals. That's what it does at its, its base. So if that's going wrong, it means you're in severe distress. So we know the connection between skeletal deformities and bone growth, so rickets and osteomalacia, and it's connected to vitamin D. And so vitamin D we were designed to get from the sun, but we've moved a long way from that since the, you know, since the Industrial Revolution, or even since we kind of migrated um, north into climates where we don't get sun. That's when we began to eat foods that were rich in vitamin D. So if we're vitamin D deficient, we need to eat a diet rich in vitamin D. And if you look at anyone's diet today, and if you're not thinking about it, I can guarantee you're not. And so that's why I test my patients for vitamin D deficiency. But the book is about how you get back to that eating and how you deliver vitamin D around the body. And it's even not alone, there's other nutrients in this picture that we've just stripped out of the diet. You know, that's so fascinating because I, 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 it happened to myself and I, I hear people saying, well, how in the world we live in LA, there is plenty of sun, we uh, put sunblock all over our body and we have our blood work done and guess what, we are uh, vitamin D deficient. What, what vitamin D does throughout the body is just profound. It is absolutely crucial to nearly every cellular function, right down to your genes. So your genes has, you know, uh, the, two to three thousand uh, vitamin D receptors waiting for it. So when it's deficient, you know, you're sending messages to your body constantly that your environment is a nutrient uh, deficient environment. And so, you know, we know now that, so as a great example, we, we, there was just case studies came out last month that there, the cases of rickets in Australia are increasing in kids. Wow. Now, rickets, uh, now in Australia, where we see, it's obviously, high. you know, we have huge, uh, and we do the same thing, we cover up from the right. sun. But we are deficient. I see every one of my patients who has dental disease is deficient in vitamin D. And so it's just a, a crazily simple uh, subject that we just have forgotten. Yeah. Yeah. So let me ask you, so what about uh, you know, people out here take their vitamins and supplements and all these kind of things. What about taking supplements and vitamins versus a natural dental diet? So I think there's a role of, um, so my, term, my, my approach is always diet is your baseline. That's your long-term approach. So you're, you're going, to uh, aim to eat for, for good health for life. But for some people I find supplements doesn't play a role. So vitamin D supplements for instance, uh, certain people, there's a lot of different kind of stops and uh, things in the body that has to happen before you get your blood level spiking in vitamin D. So people with gut issues, people with immune issues, they, if they start eating a diet, then for instance they may not absorb um, vitamin D properly. And so they might not have uh, the, the same benefits, whereas if we've found that so with supplementation, uh, you can sometimes help these cases, so especially malabsorption problems, which is so many people now, uh, you can get them up and assist them to get up to their levels, and then their diet will start to, you know, we can fix that as it moves on. But because it's so fundamental, I find that, you know, if, if we focus on those levels as a base, but then and then fix the diet, some people will need supplementation, but as your approach is, it's very functional. You know, if we measure, if we understand, we can go both ways. But long term, uh, if, if people can comply, food is the absolute way to, to health, yeah. It's fascinating. Yeah. What, what, what are you saying about not absorbing it? So you can take all the supplements you want, Absolutely. but if you don't have the, the fats necessary to absorb it, because they're fat soluble items, Absolutely. Fat so and it just washes out. You took it in, in the other. Completely, that's that's absolutely yeah. it. And the wrong fats too. So, for instance, uh, vegetable oils and these kind of omega six oils that are everywhere, um, unfortunately, and especially in the US, you you guys have s the refined um, vegetable oils are just in everything. So right. that is actually going into your body, and your body doesn't recognize it. So the the blood cholesterols that carry these fat soluble nutrients around, uh, they're not what your body recognizes, and you don't 
distribute the nutrients anyway. So it's exactly as you say, if you take a vitamin D supplement with a um, kind of a low fat salad dressing, you, you won't absorb any. And it's a wow, wow. Interesting that thing. is fascinating. <laughs> My God, now yeah. you, you made me think a hundred times more what I'm yeah. eating and how I eat. And calcium needs vitamin C and it's a thick environment, right? right? Exactly, exactly. exactly. To, to yeah, so process, yeah, it's right? interesting. So it's not just about supplementation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, completely, exactly. And so, like, what Price is talking about is that you know nature has everything set up in a very special way. So, what people were doing for thousands of years, and understanding their food processes is really important because they did that because it's what the body needs. And yeah, we've moved yeah. a long way from that. Yeah, like like with acid reflux, for example. Uh, so, so sometimes what people will do is they'll get proton pump inhibitors. But the proton pump inhibitors will further exacerbate the nutrition aspects you're you're talking about. Yeah. Whereas really the cause may be some, some, some diet issues that could, that could spare and everything. It's, it's a great point actually because <clears throat> a lot of the problem with acid re reflux is a lack of acid. So what happens is that you get a lack of acid and you get a flow of uh, bacteria uh -huh. into the um, in, in, up around the pyloric sphincter. That's why you get the, the reflux. So it's actually a lack of, of gastric acids. And then if you have protein pump inhibitors, you re reduce the, the gastric acid as well. So that's, and so actually people with gastric reflux usually need a kick of acid, so like wow. a, a, or, you know, an assistance of bile acid to help them digest, and then, and then there, you settle the microbiome, and it's a condition um, called SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, where, where you have bacteria growing where they shouldn't, and so that's that constant gas popping up, because there's bacteria there that are fermenting uh, carbohydrates that aren't there. So the, acid, so the lack of acid is in the small bowel, or it's in the stomach, or It's where? in the stomach, so when you have, so you've got thousands and thousands of bacteria is where the, uh, the digestion should be happening, uh, and so what happens is that most of the bacteria in the large intestine, if you get this imbalance, or you have a lack of intestine, what happens is the bacteria start to creep up, because the, the stomach acid actually controls where the acid, where the bacteria live, and so when you get bacteria creeping up into the small intestine, that's when you get this uh, fermentation of carbohydrates that causes this gas that pops up. Mm -hmm. And so if you take protein pump inhibitors, you're further inhibiting your acid and you're making the problem worse. And so it, it doesn't make sense. And it's this is all of the, the gut wow. microbiome is a huge, it's an amazing, in chapter five, wow. we go from, we're good, but, we're yeah, but it, it's so, but it's very relevant to people with, uh, you know, tonsils and adenoid issues because all of the gut is 80% of where the immune system is, um, is seeded. And so it's a constant uh, conversation between microbes and the immune system. So what we're seeing in the craniofacial system is an intolerant immune system. And so it's all about getting to that gut. And it's, it's fascinating. It's such an interesting wow. area. Yeah. You explained it so well. So, yeah. Yes, it, it does. So well. It makes so yeah. much sense. So yeah. which brings me to back to the initial question, how important it is for that baby to start learning to eat and to chew and you know to to bring the right nutrients and being break uh, broke down you know by by the bacteria starting in the mouth so now if you what we do here we have a limited tongue motion and then inability to chew well that would be, make even more difficult for that baby uh, it's such an important point and breastfeeding really is one of the best models because you see the physical component Absolutely. of growth, you see the nutrient component. So a vitamin D deficient mother will pass vitamin D deficient breast milk to their child. And so that's why the mother should always be checked in the diet and the gut. And even bacteria as well. So there's a system, a lymphatic system that takes bacteria from a mother's uh, gut to her breast milk and then delivers it to the child. So the, the child's getting um, breast milk uh, delivered yeah, with culture. bacteria. Yeah, it's cultures. Yes. And yeah. so it goes into the mouth, goes into the gut, and that's their immune system forming directly from the mother. And so you take breastfeeding away, you, you just strip the whole system and you can see why kids' immune systems are so upset today because they're not introduced in a way that they're designed to. Right. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Thank Stephen Lane, The Dental thank Diet. We really appreciate much. having yes. you here and being one of our teachers. So, I appreciate so it very much. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.